We do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us here this morning. We welcome you to Bayou Baptist Church on this day, December the 9th. Look cool outside, but at least it's not raining. So that, that's a good thing. Yesterday was enough rain to last us for the rest of the year. I don't think that'll work. But it, was, it rained all day long. So good to see all who are with us. We, again, we welcome you and God bless each and every one. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Young number 87, joy to the world. <coughs> So if 
you would like to know who or what, I will put that back in the foyer. If you would like to sign up for something or put something down, you can do that as well. The 21st will begin the Christmas uh, time off or the Christmas break for students here in St. Tammany Parish. It's a half a day that day. Uh, so that's, I think it's on a Friday. And so uh, they'll be out of school half a day on Friday the 21st until uh, January the 7th is when they go back. Um, so basically from December the 24th to January 4th, that's the school day. But they don't go back until that Monday, which is January the 7th. So keep that in mind. Uh, no school here in St. County Parish. Uh, we will not have Sunday school the 23rd, uh, but we will have worship service on the 23rd. And uh, Christmas, of course, is on a Tuesday this year. Uh, we will not have Wednesday night Bible study on the 26th of December, the day after. Uh, no sc Sunday school on the 30th of December, uh, but we will have worship service. And then, of course, no Bible study the 2nd of January uh, for that night. So be aware of that. You may want to may want to mark that down. We are collecting for Annie Armstrong. You will see, I mean, I'm sorry, Lottie Moon. You will see offering envelopes for Lottie Moon. Give over and above what you give for the work in church. We have that. We have collected $50 so far, and we'll do that until the end of the month. So if you'd like to give, do so. Uh, put it in there. There are no more calendars left. They're gone. So uh, for the, uh, hopefully uh, everyone has gotten one or two or three or whatever. So appreciate everyone. That way we don't have to worry about anything else as well. <clears throat> For, for those of you who didn't know it, yesterday was the election uh, for state representative 90 that represents us. Uh, Mary Dubasov won the election for representative 90, just to be aware of that. Um, uh, on the school board, uh, Mike Winkle and Tammy Lammy was the two that won his boys in the school board here in St. Tammy Parish. And the animal shelter renewal tax did pass. So that, that took place as well. So that happened. And there are other things too. And I think that was the major thing as far as affecting us or having with us as well. So just so you know concerning that, um, you need to be aware of anything else I do not know. Um, I know she doesn't have it with her, but if anybody would like to find a Christmas ornament, you need to see Clint. I'm going to bring you everything next Sunday. Next Sunday at the big I sold out a lot of stuff, so I had to really get busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then you, you can just see her, so she'll bring that next next Sunday uh, for the banquet. That way everybody else can, if you want to take a look at what she has as well. Any other announcements? Anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on or taking place that we need to be aware of? If not, oh, the, yes, the, uh, oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm looking at it too. Uh, the angel tree as well. Yeah, there's things on there. Um, there are some. I appreciate it. Uh, looks like some people have already started with uh, some of that already. So that, that's a that, that's a good thing. So there are still things on there if you would like to give uh, for uh, people here that's in need. Um, um, how long, Megan? Um, to the last minute. <laughs> last minute? Yep, to the last possible second. The last possible second, okay. And have you decided if if they're going to come and get it, or are we going to bring it, or um, how is that going to work? Well, you have their number, so okay. you can call them and ask them if they want to come pick it up, or if they want us to bring it over there. They have to drive, so it just depends if they have a car or not to pick it up. Okay. Um, you said they live in Poplarville? Yeah, they live in Poplarville. Okay. Also, if y'all have any electronics that you don't use anymore or something, any, One more, any electronics that you don't use anymore that you want to give away, um, they lost all their iPads and their iPods and stuff. So I have some people that are donating laptops, and uh, I have one person that's donating old phones. So if you have under ever any old stuff like that that you like to donate, you can do that as well. Because, yeah. Who are we donating that to? Huh? The same people? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Electronic stuff. Oh, you're talking about anything 
I go phones? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But no flip phone, right? I mean, anything. I don't know. Anything. And you can't plug a headphone into it. I don't think they're going to want it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> no dinosaurs. Huh?
Brian and Mandy and the family, just pray for them. Things are going on. I ask you to pray for both of them. Daniel Melton, um, continue to remember him in prayer. I know he continues to have physical problems and pains, and um, sometimes he can get around and sometimes he can't. So remember Daniel in prayer. Uh, remember the homeless during this time of the season, uh, especially when it gets real cold out there. Many, many people who don't have a place, so do remember the homeless. Um, there's a person that we go with, Brian Chason. He's going to have hip surgery tomorrow. So remember Brian, remember a guy by the name of Brian Chason, as he will be having hip surgery tomorrow in New Orleans. So remember him in prayer. Uh, Trish. Linda's sister Trish is still unemployed, right? Yeah, I think she's working on it. She went for an interview. Okay. I haven't heard anything yet. Okay, so remember Trish and Brad, she is unemployed and looking for a job now. So so do remember her and pray and pray for her as well. Um, again, just different ones on our prayer list. Of course, Miss Virginia Hall, Danny Hall. Remember them in prayer, Darlene and Shell in prayer, and different other ones that are maybe under the weather or not doing too well this morning and just remember them in prayer and pray for them as well. There are many people during this time of the year that have uh, get into depressions because of the holiday season, either the loss of a loved one, a friend, or just something takes place and happens because of the holiday season, maybe memories of past that where they don't do too well during the holiday season. Pray for different people that are uh, struggling during the holiday season. Pray for the many people who work in retail during this time of the year as well, as it is a hectic time of the season. So remember them. And traveling mercies for many who are traveling and will be traveling, as it is a busy time too, of traveling time. So pray for the different ones and different people. Many, many senior adults, to pray for them and remember them in prayer, uh, whether they're at home or whether they're in a nursing home. Just remember different different senior adults and pray for them as well. On the prayer request, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us. Ms. Brandy. I don't know if you all know, some of you do, my, my Aunt Sherry is coming down from Stillwater th this next Saturday. I'm still hoping that we can all make it to church on the 16th. But again, I'm still not totally sure how it's going to work. Well, we'll pray for traveling mercies for the family as they travel down this way. We show up with this family. Michael. I've got two. Number one, my dad, his, his uh, surgery is scheduled for the 20th of this yes. month. Yes. Yes. So, pray for him. Yes. Hopefully it all goes well. Yes. And then uh, number two, for my grandma for her health. Yes. She picks right. back up on her feet and does well. Yeah, remember, remember your dad and your grandmother, both of them. Dad's having an operation on his ear, and he's got a hole in his eardrum. Is that right? Am I yeah. said that right? And they're going to fix that. So on the 20th, so remember him and then your grandmother, she had a little setback and she had health issues. So remember her and We sure will. Yes. Other prayer requests. Ms. Ginger. Uh, just continue to pray for my family. All the different things going on, each one of us. Sure. Prayer thanks here and David maybe. Yeah, it's there. good to see you. How you doing, Dave? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Just good to be here in God's house. And how you doing with your back and your leg? My back really doesn't bother me too much. It's right now my left leg more than anything. Okay. Uh, and I do notice that it's uh, a little swollen and I'm holding a little fluid in that uh, left leg. Okay. Danny's under the weather too. Danny 
has a bowel up and down, upper respiratory. He's probably going to the intensive care with tomorrow or today. He said he was going this morning. Okay, so he's going there, but he's been battling for a while now, and he didn't remember him. Yes. And uh, Angela Mansfield, when <coughs> she passed away, they took her off the board. Wow. Okay. She away, she was 52. Wow. Okay. So remember that family in prayer, what they're dealing with. We sure will. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving. Um, Melissa passed one. The, you finished biology, you said, right? Oh. Pharmacology. Pharmacology. She finished pharmacology, and so that's a good thing. So just continue to pray for her. Are you out of school now until next year? Mm -hmm. Good. Prayer of thanks, and continue to remember her, and she's going to be back at school again next year. So we're going to be good prayer. Others. Oh, there we go. I was one of the texts that I worked with. He uh, went in to have a polyp removed and ended up bleeding. He had to go back into um, surgery. So he's doing well. He, he, they polarized it and he stopped bleeding. But um, I don't know how much he bled before they got it. So um. I think he's quite for him. And also, um, one of the other texts had a little cousin who had a newborn baby. mother she was in Slotta Memorial this week for a few days and just the whole situation with both our moms I mean I, Johnny and I know it looks like we're probably gonna have to do a little move to Kentucky for a little bit because I don't want my mom to go in a nursing home so right. it's you know trying to decide or how we're going to do this especially with his treatments right. and, yes. but we know it's coming so. right well, remember y'all in prayer with that decision, which y'all need to do as well. So I pray for y'all. We sure will. But that's hard. It is hard. It is, yes. I pray for y'all. Remember y'all. And Madison, it's good to see you too as well. Um, you get to talk that, that good Cajun talk up that way? <laughs> I'm not good at it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Huh? <laughs> do you get confused sometimes when they... Wait, what? Do you ever get confused or, or, or try to think, okay, can you say that again? It's for the... Oh, yeah, I have one professor that's Cajun, and I can't. Get in the whole answer. No, it's you go on over to Homa. <laughs> you go on over to Homa where John works, and then you're like, what language? <laughs> well, maybe that's understandable why she talks the way she does, huh? Because she was at home for a long time. So, yeah. But, but it's good, that, it's good that you're here, Madison, and I'm glad that you're doing well also. And you know what else? Again, just pray for each other. Remember each other in prayer during this time of the year. Pray for those who, again, are struggling and going through difficulties, whatever may be going on in their life. Just pray for them. Traveling mercies for all, and remember all in prayer as well. Um, no matter what you may be going through, give thanks to the Lord for his many, many blessings. Always remember what the Lord has done in your life and that he is still working in our lives and still blessing us as we journey in his life. It may not seem like it sometimes, but we are being blessed by the Lord each and every day because understand this, he's with us every day and that in of itself is a blessing because he gives us strength, guidance, and help, no matter what we may be going through. So 
We'll always give thanks to the Lord for His grace, His mercy, and His help. And again, pray for those who are less fortunate than you. There are many out there that have a whole lot less, even though you think, think I really don't have much, but that much that you think you don't have, people have even less. And thanks to the Lord for His many blessings. Let's go to Lord. Almighty God, as we come before you again this morning, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and are doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for many, many past blessings and the many things you have done and are still doing in our lives. We lift up the many, many people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Many are sick or are sick or dealing with different health issues. Some, many are sitting here and are here and are dealing with different health issues themselves. And Lord, we lift up all who are dealing with it, and we ask for your healing power, for your help, your grace, and your mercy upon them. We pray for those that are struggling and going through difficulties, whatever may be going on, things at work, things at home, and even the battles that we have within ourselves. We pray for strength, guidance, and for help. For the many that are in despondency, the many that are depressed due to the holiday season or maybe just different things that are taking place and don't understand why or how come, Father, we ask that you will lift them up and help them and be with each and every one. Traveling mercies for the many that are traveling and will be traveling over these holidays. Be with those in retail and other places as well who deal with people on a daily basis, especially during this time of the year. Again, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many, many that have been voiced here this morning. Many different people are dealing with different things, and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy as well. We pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. We lift them up. And we ask for help, for grace and mercy in their lives as well. Lord, we pray for the many who do not know Jesus Christ, especially during this time of the season, for they have no reason to be joyous. But we pray for the many who do not know Jesus Christ, and we pray for salvation, a friend, a co-worker, a relative, or even a complete stranger. We pray for salvation and for help in the lives of many, many people. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us, and help us in all that we do. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us stand as the outcome that leads us in our laboratory here. <coughs>
Almighty God, again we come before you. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Thanks for giving to us things needed in our life and supplying us with so much. Lord, we come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask that you will see to it that all is collected is used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Amen. 
what the Lord would have for us to do now. And I especially like what it says in that last verse as well. Bid envy, strife, quarrel, cease, fill the whole world with heaven's peace. And this is what's needed in our world today. All this envy and all this chaos and everything that's going on is only the work of Satan trying to keep us from doing the things of God. So I pray that maybe during this time of the year, people can indeed look to the Lord as well. If you have your Bibles, turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verses 47 through 56. Here we have a scripture that is very seldom read or even spoke about concerning what we think of and what it says is Mary's song or what is known as the Magnificat. It was a way of Mary glorifying and magnifying the Lord through song. It contains quotes, Old Testament scripture, and also the song, some of the song of Hannah as well. Now, Mary knew that she was to become a mother, of course, by the angel of the Lord revealed to her. And she also knew by the angel that her cousin Elizabeth would give birth in about three months. So she went to see Mary, and together they rejoiced. It says in the previous uh, verses of chapter 1, in verse 42 and following, it says, in a loud voice, as, as when Mary did get to Elizabeth, here Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth tells Mary in a loud voice, she explains, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. For why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greetings reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Uh, concerning this, now, Nazareth to where Mary lived and to where John the Bat, where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived, was about 80 to 90 miles away uh, concerning this. Now, understand, this was a long trip for her. Anywhere from four to five days this would take for her to get from Nazareth to where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. Now, understand that as we are reading this and as we're thinking about this, this is a 13, 14 year old girl. This is not a grown lady. This is not someone who's 21, 28, 25 years old. This is a young girl of 13, 14 years old that has so magnified the Lord and also has gone to see her cousin. Now, we don't know all the particulars of how she got there whether she went with a caravan, whether she went by herself, whether Joseph aided her there and then left and then went back to what he had to do, as far as that. Either way, it's, it's a trip. Uh, and understand, for us, 81 miles or 80 or 90 miles is no big deal. But back then it was. And again, this took at least four or five days for her, either walking or on donkey, to get from Nazareth to where Zachariah lived in, and it was around the Hebron area, around, around in, 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 the, in the county of the, the district of Judea. So remember this when we're looking at this as well. Now, like uh, Elizabeth, Mary here is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So what is being said and done here is indeed by God who has given this to her. Elizabeth being filled with joy and proclaiming that Mary was blessed among children, but not above children. Keep that in mind as well. You see, there's a difference here when she says, blessed are you among children, among women, and not above women. So, in no way was Elizabeth saying that Mary, as some may say, she was equal with God or, or any of that else. 
she, she was not, but she was blessed by God. And Mary did believe that the word of did believe what the word of God was spoken to her, and that how God was going to accomplish this through her. So understand this. So today let us look at this song or this praise of Mary to God as this 13, 14 year old young girl who is pregnant with the Son of God exclaims and glorifies God in wholeness, in spirit, and in truth. Notice, first of all, what God did for Mary in verse 45 through 49. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. Now, understand the mindset and understand here of what's going on with Mary here. Mary knew that she, like everyone else, needed a Savior. And she knew that she, that God had indeed saved her and was going to save her as well. She knew herself again to be a sinner, just like the rest of us. She is in awe that Jehovah God has picked her over all of the other girls that were indeed qualified, as well as within Mary, and that God had picked her. Now, what we see here is Mary is a humble and godly person, and that God would use her to bring himself into the world as a little babe. Now, indeed, Mary is blessed among women. Not above women, as here Elizabeth so rightly says, and even here, as Mary herself says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Notice she didn't say, my soul glorifies in myself and who I am, but she gives all glory and honor to Jehovah God. She doesn't put in anything upon herself. She is humble before God, even though this awesome thing is now taking place, and what was revealed to her by the angel, that she would deliver the Son of God and what he would do. Yet she is still humble here. So let us not play it down or even let us, let, let us not make her a goddess and kneel before her. The only one that we kneel and worship is God. And God comes in the person of himself, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That is it. Nobody else. We're not to uplift anyone. Not even Mary. She is the work that God wants done for all of us. She's working. And in that, what's taking place is for the salvation of the whole world. And she humbles herself before him. And Mary knew that what was taking place in this life, in her, in her life, and also in her body, was by the power of Almighty God. She knew this. It wasn't her power. She had no control over any of this stuff that was going on as far as saying, okay, I am a god or goddess. No. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord. And this is what we need to do as well. And, and, and notice in it, he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. See, that's the first place we need to start. Always humble yourself before the Lord. Never think that you are better than someone else, or that you better, or that you're higher than someone else. But be humble. Stay humble. Who is the most humble person in the Bible? Anybody? Huh? Jesus. No. According to the Bible, who was the most humble person? Moses. It says Moses was the most humble person that there was. So you figure, but yeah, Jesus was humble. I'm not saying that, but as far as humanistically speaking, even though he was human, it says Moses was the most humble person in the Bible. 
And we should always be humble. And look at what Moses had done. He, he, was, he was before God, and God even came and spoke to him, and he'd done many other things by the power of God, but yet he remained humble. And this is the one thing that we need to do today. Remain humble no matter what may take place in your life, no matter how high or what you may be doing in life or what may be taking place. Remain humble. Here, even though God picked Mary, using Mary for this awesome task, she remained humble. She remained humble. God has been mindful of the humble state of his, what, servant. Servant. Understand that. And notice, as she said, concerning what she even, what she even says here, holy is his name, not hers. See, her joy is what God was doing in her life. Her joy was the Lord. And today, our joy is what God is doing in our life as well. And what he has done already and what he's done for us. And how, indeed, what he's going to do as well. Holy is his name. So Mary here, she praises and glorifies God and her state that she's in, even though she knows what it may, or she may know what's going on. But this is coming now from a 14 or 13 year old girl. Now, you can say what you want. A 13, a 14 year old girl is still a 13 and 14 year old girl then as it is today. It's still the same. It wasn't the fact that a 13, 14, 15 year old back then was more mature than a 13 or 14 or 15 year old today. No. We're all the same. Nothing has changed. But we see the mindset of this young girl as she says, Lord, look what you have done for me. And she praises and glorifies God. Then look at what she, now she next she says, look at what God has done for us. Everybody. The world. In verses 50 through 53. Look, look at what takes place now. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their most inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry, <coughs> hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. See, God has included all people. Now, who has God included? All people that fear God as she so proclaims in her first place that she here is given to everyone concerning it. He has extended his mercy to those who fear him. See, the first place we need to do is fear the Lord, not in the fear as to where we don't come before him, but to know who is God and give him the awe, the praise and the glory, and the reverence due to his name, fearing him as he is the one true God. And she said, and all of us, every one of us here, have received mercy and experienced his help from generation to generation to generation. It goes on and on and on. He has helped the helpless. He has lifted up the humble. He has fed the hungry. He has given insight, or she here gives insight to what the Lord will do and how he will bring justice and hope to the people who are looking for this. Those who are discouraged. She remembers what God has done by his mighty hand. And thus, he makes the same observation that Hannah made from 1 Samuel chapter 2. See, this is almost a duplicate of what Hannah in her prayer as well. And this is coming again from a 13, 14 year old girl who didn't have the scriptures that we have to read from. This is coming from memory of what Hannah so said in her own exhortation concerning her praise and glory to God. They didn't have the scriptures back then. They had the scrolls. And women only knew what people taught them in the homes. 
They weren't allowed to go to the university or to the temple to learn anything. All of this was done in the homes and being from memory as well. And she's quoting some of the things from Hannah. Listen to what ha how Hannah herself says the same thing in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6 through 9. Look at how, it re how resembling they are. The Lord brings death and makes life. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits with the princesses and then and with them inherit the throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth of the Lord, upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silent in darkness. See, there's a resemblance here as she too remembers the prayer of Hannah and then recites by the power of God what happens. See, the grace and the ways of God are always contrary to the thoughts and the ways of the world. If you look around, you will see the vast difference of the ways of God and the ways of the world. Even the grace of God that he bestows upon the many and many of us who don't even deserve grace and what he so gives and how the world gives. The world does not give, it just takes. But God continues to give and continues to supply and continues to help no matter what. Even when we are unfaithful, God is still faithful all that he does and all that he gives us as well. And here Mary even so relates to that. He has performed mighty deeds. He has scattered those. He has brought down the rulers. He has, lifted, he has filled the hungry. Oh, how he has done so many things as well. And so many have found this out throughout the years. God has shown the strength of his arm. He's revealed his power. And his love. If you think and go back and think of some of the things that even in the Old Testament that you have read, and even some of the things in the New Testament you have read, God displays his power and what he has done. Even, especially as we now know the rest of the story that Mary did not know, we see that he showed his power and his love in the fact and the salvation that he has given mankind. He displayed it at the cross and thus at the resurrection as well. That indeed, he is in control of all things. And also understand what the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And then later on he goes in that same chapter of 1 of 1 Corinthians in verse 26. He says, brothers, and I would put sisters, but I would put everyone. Think of what you were when you were called. In other words, think of what you were before the Lord saved you. Before the Lord came into your heart and your life and changed you. Think of what you were. I do this all the time. I think of what I was. I think I depraved what I used to do. It says, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. None of us here can say that. None of us have no, noble birth. And now we're born into the family of God. And what is more noble than that? For all of us who are saved. He says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Again, you know, Mary here, she looks and gives insight by the power of God. Well, we can do the same thing today. We can relate to people and say, look, 
This is what I used to be. Now, this is what I am. True, I'm not perfect. And I'm not making any excuses. God's still chipping away at some of the things that he doesn't want me to do. He's still dealing with me and dealing with some of the things I should not do that does not glorify or give him the praise. But he's helping me with it. But you should have seen me or you should have heard me before I came to know the Lord. You wouldn't want to be around me. Well, I tell this to people lots in my own life. And what happened even in my own life before the Lord came into my life. Terrible. Bad. But the Lord has chipped away all of that. He helps us. He changes us into the people that he wants us to be. The people belonging to him. Oh, what an awesome God we have. He is faithful, even when we are not. And he's still doing for us as well. And then the last thing that this young girl of 13, 14 years old gets insight as well is what God did for Israel. In verses 54 and 55, notice what she says. He has helped his servant Israel remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he has said to our fathers. Such an awesome thing that we see here. Now, remember what the angel told Joseph in his dream in Matthew chapter 1, when Joseph was contemplating divorcing Mary and getting rid of her, when he found out that she was with child, it was not his. He contemplated to giving her a certificate of divorce because even when you were pledged back then, the only way that debt can be broken was by a divorce, a certificate of divorce. So he was going to do this because he knew that the child that she was carrying was not his. And so the angel came to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what he conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. See, that was God's plan. That's what God was so accomplishing through Jesus Christ and what he did. So he will save his people from his sins. In spite of Israel's destitute condition, and despite the fact that all that was taking place in the land of Israel, or even with the people, the nation Israel was still God's servants and God's people. And he would help to fulfill the purpose he had and what he was going to do. God was still the God of Israel. He was going to keep his promise and to show mercy to the descendants of Abraham. Even though many of them were unfaithful to God, he was still going to keep his promise. Keeping his covenant promise that he made to Abraham, if you go back in Genesis and read the covenant promise that God made to him. God says, I will be faithful. See, there's nothing that we had to do on that part. God says, I will fulfill it. And he's doing it in the person of Jesus Christ. That was the fulfillment of it. And the child that Mary was carrying would fulfill that covenant through his death on the cross. That's how God had it all planned from the beginning. That his son, that he would come and he would die for our sin. Mary, by faith, put hope in the promise of God's word. God's word for his people and all who fear him, as, we, as she said earlier, concerning the fear of people coming to know God and having God. Just like, just like uh, many, so many people that we read about in the Old Testament, Rahab. She came to know the Lord as her God and as a Savior. Why? Because she feared God. She knew that God was the God Almighty above all gods. And she put faith and trust in him. So just as so many in the Old Testament and New Testament put faith in God's word, 
Let us do the same today. See, this is what's hurting the nation today. People are not putting faith or keeping the words of God, the promises of God, not relying upon and remembering what God has said and what God will do and what God has already done. Here, Mary knows and she's relating to everyone. This is what God's going to do. This is what God has done as well. And we can find comfort in the promises of God. Why? Because God fulfills his promise. The psalmist, I think, says it right in Psalm chapter 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy, and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. And indeed, we know the rest of the story of how God came, born of a virgin, became flesh, died on the cross, and three days later, he arose. In this, the time of the season, let us, too, remember, and let us sing a new song to the Lord, and let us glorify and magnify him as well in what he has done. For he has brought salvation to the land and to everyone who looks upon Jesus Christ can be saved. And all they have to do is put faith in the one who died for them and believe God's word that they may find atonement for sin through the work that Jesus Christ has done at Calvary. If you have not done this, do it today, or you may not have tomorrow. Do it now. For God said, today is a day of salvation. Allow Jesus to be in your heart and your life, and let him continue to walk with you and change you into the person that he wants you to be. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come before you again, Lord, we lift up and we pray for so many in need of Jesus Christ. Some may be sitting here, some may only hear this, but Lord, we pray for salvation. And if there's anyone here today that truly does not know you in their hearts and in their lives and have not given their hearts and their lives to you, I pray today by your power that they will come. They will give their life and their heart to you and allow you to work in their life. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Turn to hymn number 312, Softly and Tenderly. Jesus is calling you softly and tenderly. Here come as we sing all four standards of 312, Softly and Tenderly.
praise and magnification that Mary has given to the Lord. Uh, she was carrying the Lord. It's an awesome thing that we read. When you get time, just read it yourself slowly and dwell upon it and think about the things of God and what he has done and still is doing in our lives, no matter what you may be going through or no matter what may be taking place. Indeed, I know it's a time of Christmas and for some it's not a good time, but it's a time in which we have set aside to remember that God has given us the greatest gift of all, himself. He came down, born of a virgin, he died on the cross, and then he arose. The perfect lamb, such an awesome gift that he has given and has done for us. We invite you to come back Wednesday night. We have prayer meeting, Bible study, food. Come about 6.30. You lead about that time. Come and join us for food, for fellowship, and for Bible study this coming Wednesday. If not, come next Sunday. Sunday school, 9 o'clock, worship service, 10.30. Come, worship with us in spirit and in truth. If you'd like to... Uh, do an angel gift, you can do so. There are things on there on the tree. You can do that. Bring down the tree <laughs> next Sunday. And then, like I said, I'll get together and, and see about what we, how we're going to do concerning getting a gift to them before Christmas, the following <coughs> week. So if you'd like to get something, you can do that. But bring it next Sunday. Also remember the many other things that are going on. This coming Saturday, the wreaths that will be presented at the uh, military cemetery right off of, by Camp Villar back there, right off of I-10 service road off the 12. Uh, if you'd like to go there, it starts at 11 o'clock, and it starts promptly at 11. And be aware that there's going to be a lot of people and a lot of cars. So just be aware of that, concerning that. Um, I do have the list here for our banquet that will be next Sunday after the morning worship. I'll put that in the back in the foyer. You. you can look it over if you'd like to put something there. And also, Glenda, next week, will have Christmas ornaments if you'd like to purchase those as well. So be aware of all of the things that are going on and taking place as well. May God bless and have a good day today in the Lord. Now, lead us in closing prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you again thanking you for all that you've done. And Father, listening and understanding how Mary felt about what you've done for her. I pray that each one here realizes what you've done for them. The Father sent your Son to die on the cross for each and every one of us. That we all, that we all have the opportunity to live forever with you. I thank you for each one that is here. I pray that you'll bless each one. Be with us as we leave. Bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call, but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship 